Hi, this is Bruce, and welcome to my tutorial on the F-22 Raptor, the stock aircraft in the P-3D version 4.4. I'm outside cold and dark at the moment. You can see how it looks. Uh, just to let you know, the uh, doors or the canopy, so shift E does what the doors would do, ladder goes away, and then watch as goggles will come down as well. There you go, and then shift E will open that back up. If you hit shift E2, and that's always a little tricky, the bomb bay doors open up. Shift E2 should close them. Shift E3 should open up the missile doors on the left, and shift E4 would open up on the right, but it's redundant, so I won't bother modeling that. So we'll close that back up. Then we're going to roll inside, and this is the cold and dark look. You can see it's fairly primitive. It's somewhat accurate to the pictures that I've seen, but because a lot of the information about the cockpit is uh, still under wraps, I had to dig a little bit just to find the very basics to include in this tutorial. So if you have any other information that helps us all along, that'd be great, but I'm going to share a few things. I've been flying this just for fun now and then, just for a VFR enjoyment to look at the scenery and such, and uh, it's a rocket, so it's a great way to do it quick. But there's more here than meets the eye, and that's what I want to show and remember for myself and share with my community. So if you have any comments, please type them in. I'm not sure I'm going to get it all right. And the flow of things, I'm not sure what that is either, but I'm using the best logic I have at the moment. And I'm going to show you what I do. So first, we're going to left-click on the battery. And then we're going to go over to the uh, left side here. And by the way, our parking brake is set by this switch here. You cannot use control period, as it would indicate down here, uh, because it just doesn't work with this aircraft. So a left-click on any of these goes up, and a right-click brings it down. So if right-clicking brings it to anti-skid, right-clicking again is release left clicking will bring it back up to parking brake and that's where we want to keep it. Rolling down to the left now, in order to get these displays up here to light up, you need to get these two interior lights switched rolled to the right. So first is the multifunction displays, primary and secondaries. There are three of the secondaries. We're going to roll that far to the right and then the instrument panel, which is the center portion up above and the little ones up above, they're going to come on so you can see these upper ones are already on and then these are going to come on when we power up and then the instrument section there will come on as well. So we've got the uh, ability then to see what there is to see. The APU is here. A left click is going to put it to start. When you let go your left mouse button it automatically drops back to arm. And you can see up here the APU spooling and I'm just going to go ahead and roll up so you can see. And it finally says OK. It happens really fast. Uh, amazingly fast. I'm not sure how accurate that even is. Down here on exterior lights, we might as well turn on our anti-collision lights now because we're going to start our engines. Starting the engines is super simple and when we do this the wheel chocks go away as well. So left click on the left engine, N1, N2, temperature, you'll see the N2 going and then the N1 will follow and then it catches right about in here and kicks it through very very rapidly. And then I don't know if you have to do these separately, so just to speed this up, I'm going to go ahead and click the right. Now I'm going to turn on the left generator one because engine one is running. And then when two fires up, I'll click generator two with the left click on my mouse. And then we'll go ahead and turn the APU off. There we go, generator two. Right click then on the APU, and we should see it spool down like that. And again, this is just a temporary bit. And it pops back to arm. Now we're going to look at some of the features that are spread throughout here. And these all have various names. This is the integrated control panel right here, or the ICP. And uh, these here, these two smaller ones, they're called the upfront displays, UFD, upfront displays. And then these three, right here in this U-shaped park, are the secondary multifunction flight displays, and that one in the middle is the primary multifunction display. So just to give you some nomenclature, that might help. So first of all, let's look at the um, upper flight, dis up front displays. Um, this one here, if you click on the UHF, you go from one to the other radio frequency. So you can switch between one and two. VHF over here between the first, say, VOR frequency and the second one that you may have entered. And then time, which is L right now, right there, that's local. Click it again, Z, that's, that's Zulu. Not sure how that actually plays into this, but uh, in terms of accuracy, but there you go. These knobs don't do anything, and these wheels don't do anything either. 
So if you want to change COM1 frequency, you click COM1, you can see what's current. If you want to change the COM frequency, you go down and press this button with your left mouse click, you see the asterisk, and let's just say it's 1, 2, 4, 6, 0. Then you hit the MRK, the mark. Now you've changed your COM1 frequency, same thing for COM2, the same procedures. If you want to change the volume, click the volume adjust and then click anything from 0 to 5, automatically it rolls. I don't think that that really does any actual changes to the volume uh, that I can tell. Nav, now there's two pages, page 1 of 2 is listed, nav 1, nav 2, take n 1, take n 2, automatic direction finder, and then to go to the next page, right here handy, just click the up arrow with your left mouse click, now you got ILS 1 and 2, and then these are like waypoints, uh, those are called steer points I believe, and it's just part of your flight plan, and I'm not sure what GINS is, I didn't do enough digging on that. But uh, just to click on that, you can see it looks like it has something to do, perhaps, with the uh, compass to align everything. So, that's a possibility. Um, there's your waypoints or your steer points. There are four pages. You can see some of the data there that it might bear for you. It's midtime arrival and route and all that. Elevation index, anyway. These are the four pages, and you can go backwards and forwards through them. Or just continual cycle past four and drops back to page one. Um, so that's that. And then the IF F is identify friend or foe, and it's really, to me, more of a squawk code kind of thing. There's two pages, so clicking on that, now you can see frequency adjust. If I want to squawk a different frequency, I'm told to squawk 4620. I do that, hit mark, now I'm squawking 4620, mode S, mode C, that kind of thing. Um, let's go back to so some of these are a little bit mysterious to me. I don't see them doing very much. They're just rolling through. Maybe those are different codes preset. I don't know. Um, but that's what this appears to be doing. The ALT, you can change from inches of mercury to QNH if you're in Europe. Uh, you can go from barometric pressure to radar altitude if you choose. Clicking here with your left mouse click. And then this one has to do with the um, the level that you're at before the alarm sounds for low altitude. So if you want to change that and make it 500 feet that the alarm goes off and then hit mark, you can. And then I can see it's changed. Now, I believe that's what law means, low altitude warning. And then HUD, here's for your weapon systems, nav. Let's just roll this up so we can see the hub. And by the way, these rollers do work. I just made it a little brighter. And the ICP2 can be made brighter. Um, nav can go like this. And you can see the basics, or you can pick anti-air, like so. Um, you can also pick air to ground, like so, and choose, and back, so, and let's leave it on them. And then other, is kind of fun, you got flight data, and if you click on it, you see we're at 93 feet. Calibrated airspeed is similar to true airspeed, but in some cases where your angle attack is high, your speed is slow, or your altitude's uh, funky, then you, you want to calibrate that and uh, offset those issues. So that gives you perhaps a more accurate airspeed in certain settings. And then again, Zulu will hold down here. You can choose calibrated, true, or ground speed for how you want to record it. And there's a mock. So those are there for us. Radar altitude, barometric altitude. Uh, there's three pages. You can just keep rolling through those things, as you can see there. So those are the others. Oh, and by the way, um, here's my total fuel. So if you want a quick heads up look at how much fuel you have, you can just put it on the other like that, go to page two, or here is page one rather. Click on fuel, there you go. That's bingo fuel, 2500, better land soon, and that's our total pounds there. That's it, the DVR doesn't do anything. If you want to change your barometric pressure, just use your mouse wheel over here, and you can change the barometric pressure, but I'll leave it on 2902 for now. I don't know what J and B are, um, they don't seem to do anything either, and I'm not familiar with this feature here. Um, I will let that be, and then there's your percentage of throttle and your temperature, so that I think is, is close to accurate. Now, these three, this one, this one, and this one, are all the same uh, creature features, functions on these menus. So you can click all of them on the menu, and you can see the, they are all identical. It just depends on what features you want to install have displayed. For instance, you could choose the ADI, which is your attitude direction indicator on this one. 
you could choose the EFHSI over here, which is Electronic Horizontal Situation Indicator here. And then when that's up, you can choose between nav and GPS. And it does track uh, with your flight plan. I use the Flight One's uh, GTN 750 in this aircraft like that. And uh, it works out just great. And it does show up in there. I'm not really happy with the uh, uh, autopilot features here, but that may be partly because of my unfamiliarity. Um, the radar and the SMS do not function. The fuel will tell us this in gallons, or you can change it to pounds, whichever you prefer. And then the engine, we saw earlier when we were spooling them up, has two pages. There's the exhaust gas temperature, oil temperature, and vibration. I believe that would be so, page one, page two. So those do work. You go back to that uh, system. Gives you our hydraulics and our electrical. It also tells us our moving surfaces. So let's say I uh, pitch up, pitch down, pitch left, or roll left, roll right. Um, you can see that those features change. I'm not sure you need that very much, but there's a possibility. And the EWS does not work. So perhaps fuel is a good place to leave it, and uh, you can choose pounds if you wish. Okay. So these three now being redundant are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is the primary multifunction flight display. And you can start here with the menu if you prefer. These are three features. They're lit up in green. So you got configuration, the MMD, and the um, tactical information display. So config here. It tells you a little bit about the aircraft. It tells you who made it. It tells you where you can go on the internet to find more information. Theoretically speaking, I did get much help there. And then there's the systems button. It's this feature here that I was able to shut down the aircraft and start with a cold and dark condition. Uh, since I've done that, now it shows red. I could get that to activate again if I pushed rapid start, which resets these three to standard um, features like this. And then and it also will close our canopy for us. Rapid start takes care of business. And then I can click the shutdown and we go to a cold and dark. The VMS either is green or grayed out. And the EFT override, sometimes we can override like so or not. It's red right now. Uh, we can override that. I'm not sure what features that does. And in fact, if somebody could tell me what EFT stands for, electronic flight something, perhaps, uh, I couldn't find it on the internet. So let's go back to the main menu. We've looked at configuration. Now let's look at the MMD. Um, this one here has a uh, range ring. It goes out to 200 and into about 10. Yeah, there's 10. Get on 20. Go back to menu. Uh, and, the, and then, I don't, yeah, none of the other features there are going to do anything. Here's nav and then MC. In my mind, that always meant meteorological conditions, but it might have to do with the GPS. But again, maybe somebody could share with the rest of us what that is. The tactical information display, and you click ATG. You can increase or decrease the width of the radar in front, like this, and you can also increase the distance or decrease the distance based on what's up here. Then it shows you ranges and such there. So let's go back to the menu and configuration one more time, make sure we don't miss something. I'm going to click menu again. And the, yeah, I think we're good. Um, the one thing that I think Okay, I'm s almost got lost there. Uh, back to the main page, using the back button as far back as it would go. Hit configuration, hit MMD. Now you can see all these different options. You got VOR, geo, air, waypoints, airports. And I'll go ahead and click on the airport there. High and low airways, the ILSs, the NDBs, and the routes. And then you can choose to have a rose compass or not. Then you go back and Let's go back to the main menu and then go up to this and now you can see that some of the features that we added are now there and if we go out or in rather and then out you can see it gets real busy real fast um, but we've created these extra features by our choices how to get to those choices go back to the very main page look at configuration and indeed there they all are right there you choose what you like i think that that is everything except for a few little features. Um, let's go back down here to the left side. If you want to set your ejection, 
left click arm. If you left click on this, the canopy blows off, but nothing else will happen. Uh, your fuel should be on all, which is up. If you want to refuel in the air, click on that one, and I'll show you the outside here. This opens up, and that's where the refueling will take place. And then these are your APU in and outs there. Uh, they're all closed up now, of course. So let's go back down to the left here again and finish where we started. Um, so we can turn on our lights too for air refueling. We got our anti-collision light on. Um, this one here is our formation lights, interior lights. We'll keep them rolling up high. Uh, the mode day, night, nav. Those that is we'll click on the right left clicks there. Console lights work. Floods work. And um, this just looks like trim details there, not to be worried about. I think I don't see much movement. And then down here on oxygen, you go from auto. If you want to left click it. Auto is right click, left click is 100%, bypass right click, normal is left click. The O box is basically, um, let me look up that definition because I had to find it. It means onboard oxygen generation system and it's already default on. Here's your auxiliary comm. These knobs do change the auxiliary frequency. Uh, brightness does work. You've got three modes on your mode dial here, guard, preset, manual, and then the radio volumes are here. I don't think they do anything really. And then if we were to move forward just a little bit, the cabin, this is your warmth in the cabin, this is your anti-fog, um, manual or auto, right clicking, bring down a manual, or auto, excuse me, and then air source you can choose as you like, and I don't think that really has any effect on your flight. So other than that, I think that takes care of most things. Let's just go ahead and bring that back on. rock and roll. Hey, thanks for uh, putting up with some of my mistakes, and I'm just looking forward to hearing back from you guys to hear what else there is to learn about this aircraft and just to have some VFR fun with it. By the way, it, it does track um, from waypoint to waypoint, although it needed some help, and there might be that maybe some keyboard commands might be more effective in controlling the altitude and such, um, like Command Z and Command H and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll find those in the uh, features in the D3D. Anyway, Look forward to hearing from you all. Have a great time. Thanks for your patience. Enjoy. Bye-bye.